Have you ever wanted to go back in time and change one thing, the one thing that will make all the pain go away? Have you ever looked at yourself in the mirror and wished you could be absolved of the guilt that is settled in your soul? Well, listen today to the right stuff and find out if changing the past is really better or if there's something infinitely more precious coming up next right here on The Right Stuff. You are listening to the best, the only, the only place to be on Tuesday night. That's right. You're listening to The Right Stuff, and you're at the right place at the right time. From England to Canada, from Detroit to the Cocono, we are showcasing Christian authors worldwide, giving you tips, tools, techniques, and resources for you, the writer, to hone and perfect your craft. Tune in every Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time right here on WPJC 104.5. And your host, Parker J. Cole. Hi, and welcome to this edition of The Right Stuff. I am so Glad you are here with me. We are going to have a fantastic time on the show as we talk to my guest co-host and contributor today, Christy Decker. She is the author of the book, Absolved, and I cannot wait to get deep down and dirty into this book and just tell you all about it. So I want you to go ahead and get your family and friends and tune in to the show. I'll give you that number in just a few moments. As always, I want to thank you for your support of my books. The Sins of the Flesh series, the Michigan Sweet Romance series, my uh, fantasy series, and my upcoming books in the short story anthologies I am doing. Just want to thank you all for your support. I can't do it without you. And you make me want to write every single day. Every time sometimes I get a writer's block or I look at the screen and can't think of a word or think, you know, there are so many people who support what I'm doing and support what all our authors that I've showcased on the show are doing. And so I write even if I just write for one person, that's you. So thank you so much for your support. If you want to weigh in our topic, you certainly can by calling in at 646-668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air. Or you can hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Co. hashtag right stuff with your questions and comments. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guests on the Right Stuff radio show. We'll be right back. Engaging the culture's imagination through speculative fiction, the Untold Podcast produces audio fiction from a Christian worldview. Find us over at untoldpodcast.com, where we partner with authors to tell science fiction, fantasy, supernatural, and horror stories. Find links at untoldpodcast.com to subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, and a variety of other platforms. Each month we produce high-quality audio fiction that's free to download and free to listen. Our submissions are open, and we're always looking to add another great story to over 24 hours of narrative entertainment. Find all of our audio fiction over at www.untoldpodcast.com. Question. If you write a book, everybody will rush out to buy it. Obvious answer, no. If you were a celebrity, or if you had a huge marketing budget, then maybe you can get a lot of exposure for your book. Another solution would be to check out joeytweets.com. JoeyTweets.com is a promotion and marketing service with access to over one-third of a million followers on Twitter. JoeyTweets.com has three packages available to fit any budget. That's J-O-E-Y-T-W-E-E-T-S.com. JoeyTweets.com. Get some serious exposure for your books. We're back, and you're hanging out with the queen of Tuesday night, Parker J. and her guests, right here on The Right Stuff. And welcome back to the show. You're listening to The Right Stuff here on WPJC 104.5. So, so happy you're here with me. I always enjoy every Tuesday night spending it with you as we showcase Christian authors worldwide. And we're going to be talking today to Christy Decker. She is the author of the book Absolved. And let me just give you just a quick blur about it. If only Stacy could go back. Let's just start, start right there. If. I think if only are some of the saddest words in the English language, in any language, matter of fact, if only. And so she says, if only Stacy could go back, back to her childhood, back to her innocence, back to the happiness she knew before he left, 
before her pain led her to make a soul-shattering mistake. Knowing she cannot go back, she moves forward, harboring a secret that haunts her and leaves her in an immeasurable weight of I'm sorry, with an immeasurable weight of regret and guilt. Her past threatens to destroy her. Can she possibly move on and be whole again? Can she ever be absolved? Now, just listening to that blurb, doesn't it just feel to you as if Stacy, the main character of our story, is going through something? Have you ever been in the same position where you wanted to go back and you say those two words, the saddest words in any language, if only, and if only is just simply a wish, the beginning of a wish, you know, but guess what? We're going to be talking to Christy Decker about her book, Absolved. And so without further ado, I'm going to bring her on air. Christy, how are you doing today? I'm doing really well, Parker. Thank you. How are you? I'm fine. And I always say thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for being with me on the show. I never take it lightly to have you here with me or any of our guests here. So I want to thank you for taking time out of your schedule to be with me. And I'm really looking forward to delving into your book. I've had the honor of reading it when it first came out. I was so thrilled by the book. I think I told you even how much I enjoyed it. And so it really is a great chance for me to repay you for giving me such a great book to read by interviewing you on our show today. So the pleasure really is all mine. I really, the pleasure and honor rather is all mine. So I really um, am happy to have you here with me. So without further ado, I can always go ahead and read a very long, complicated bio of Christy Decker, but go ahead and tell us who you are in your own words. Sure. Um, well, I'm a Texas native. I was born and raised in Fort Worth. I joined the Navy at 19 and uh, moved around a little bit, met my husband. We ended up settling in the Austin area after we both got out of the Navy. He is now a police officer with the city of Austin, and I stay at home with our six children, aged eight and under, and I write whenever I can make the time to write. You know, you said Navy, and I, I got to go back to that. So what was it like uh, <laughs> serving in the Navy? Because I am fascinated by the people who defend our country in any way, form, or fashion. I'm fascinated. I'm thankful for their service, and I want to say thank you for your service. But what was it like oh. being in the Navy? Go ahead and oh, tell me you. about it. I actually really loved it. I <laughs> worked with the best people. I, I had a wonderful experience with it, and, it, and part of it is because of the people that I served with who, even though we're all in different areas now, we still remain in touch and we're still very close. Uh, so it was, it was all good for me. I did get out at the end of my contract because I did choose to uh, start a family, and I felt like I wanted to be able to put my all into that. But it was a really wonderful experience, and I'm really thankful for it. So were you on the submarines or were you on those big no. white ships? Oh, okay. No, I, I spent a few years at a helicopter squadron, and then mm -hmm. I spent a couple of years at a reserve center in El Paso, Texas, believe it or not, <laughs> where it's very oh, dry and there's no water at all. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but it was still great, again, because of the people. The people really made it. It was it was really wonderful. And I served under really wonderful people as well. So I've, I have nothing but good things to say about my time there. You know, as when I think of the Navy, uh, I see the sailors. <laughs> I think of sailors. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing that came to mind. I think of sailors. And I think of the old uh, 1940s movies where the women were who were serving, how they had the cute little uh, sa sailor hat and the, and the dress and the skirt <laughs> and all that. So did you wear anything like that? Or was it, you know, now that it's more modern? I, guess you just wore the same I wore thing the, traditional, <laughs> the traditional whites. I never, you know, I was issued skirts and I, I never wore one. I always wore the pants. And, and not because I'm anti skirt. <laughs> Right. <laughs> I just always it was always easier to me, I think, to wear the pants. So that is traditional Navy uniforms. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's fascinating. I'm sorry. I just had to go there because I, like oh, I said, no, I thank no. all our service people for what they do for our country. And, you know, everyone's always up in arms about what's wrong that we forget to thank those who put their lives on the line for us to complain. So thank you so much for your service, Christy. Really appreciate oh, thank that. Thank you. So that was kind of cool learning that you were in the Navy. That was really kind of cool. I find that just absolutely fascinating. While you were in the Navy, you know, was writing on your mind? Have you always wanted to be a writer? Did it come after you left the Navy when you started having kids? Where did it come from? No, it was before. It was honestly shortly after I learned how to write. When I was a little girl, mm -hmm. I wrote little stories. And I actually even have one now stapled on pieces of very old paper. Um, I wrote a story whenever I was nine, and I read that to my children now. I've always enjoyed it. Um, mm -hmm. I didn't make it a serious thing until I was older. I did I did 
dabble a little bit in journalism in high school, and I was the editor-in-chief of my high school newspaper. Mm-hmm. Um, and I thought I might end up pursuing journalism, but I, I chose the Navy route, and I kind of let it go for a little while. And then finally, after having children, I was like, if I'm ever going to do this, it needs to be now. And then I started writing my first book, Absolved, in 2010. So I'd always had a desire. I just struggled, I think, as all writers do, with self-doubt. And can I really finish a book? And You know, all those questions. Um, but the desire was strong, so I finally just finally just decided I was going to do it. You were talking about being the editor of your high school newspaper. What was the name of the paper or the uh, magazine? It was, the ha- it was the Haltom High School Image. Oh, what did you guys report on? I mean, I could think, I can't, I was never on like, the high school newspaper, but I remember doing it when I was in middle school, and I remember doing it that. So, what did you guys report on? Just what was going on in the school, or anything specific? Everything that you going on? on in the school, yes. <laughs> okay. and, I mean, in my everything, all the school news, school sports. Uh, I had an editorial my my senior year, so I got to choose what I would do, uh, write about then, and it was just current events at the time. You know, I graduated mm-hmm. in two thousand and one, so. I can't mm-hmm. even remember everything that I, I was writing about as far as editorials were concerned. But mm-hmm. anyway, it was it was a good time. It was fun. Nice, I enjoyed it. nice. But you've always wanted to be a writer ever since you learned how to write, and I can really relate to that because I do not have a memory of not having a book in my hand or not wanting to write. I don't have a memory of, of that never being the case. And I got to ask you this question. It's a question I ask off and on throughout the show. Do you think writers are born or are they bred? I mean, is that a latent talent that a writer has in them, or can that be something that can be developed? I think a latent talent can be developed, but I don't know if you can uh, develop a talent that is not born within the person. That's just me. But what do you think about that? I, I think probably both. I know people that feel uh, it seems like they were born to write, and then some that just the, the, the desire grew, and they mm-hmm. uh, were able to kind of help themselves develop a craft with one reading because reading I feel like helps you in your writing. Oh, for sure. Um, and just the more you do it, the more you do it, the better you get. I feel like I, I have so much improvement to make as well. Uh, so I think if somebody has a desire and they just start, they can, they can do it. But I, I understand what you're saying. You, you must be born with it. That desire. Yeah. I totally think you have to have that desire in you. But maybe I could be wrong, you know. I'm always open to correction. I'll def- definitely tell you that. We could definitely be wrong when we talk about it. We're talking to Christy Decker. She is the author of the book, Absolved. And Absolved is available online on uh, Alexia Publishing, my publisher for Sins of the Flesh, or wherever books are sold. So go ahead and love my sister. Get a copy of Absolved today because we're going to be talking about something very deep, down, and personal with this book. So go ahead and get a copy of it today. And remember, I always tell you when you buy a author's book please 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 leave a review you know what reviews do it helps us learn if we're doing what we set out to do if we titillated you with some kind of strange um, scenario that you enjoy, let us know about it through a review. Or maybe we didn't do so good. Let us know about that too so we can improve. So make sure that when you buy a copy of Christie's book today, Absolved, that you leave a review and love my sister today. Now, one thing I want to get back to, Christy, is that on your blog, I looked at your blog when we was getting ready for the show, you say you have an addiction to writing. So what's that all about? The reason I say addiction is because I've actually spent nights up writing when I should have been sleeping. I have children, as you know, um, and they take away from your sleep. Any, any, any parent knows that. And so it was ludicrous to think that I would choose to forego sleep to write, but yet I couldn't help myself. And so that's why I, I called it an addiction because I just simply, I knew it was crazy and I should have been sleeping, but I would stay up and write anyhow because I just felt like I had to do it, you know? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like that a lot because that addiction um, unlike a, um, uh, you know, a drug addiction or something strange like that, it's only going to help you because you can release so much tension, you release stress, you get your creative ideas out, just all kind of good stuff going on. So I really like the fact that you said, you know, when I should be sleeping, I'm writing. <laughs> when I, should be sleeping, I'm writing. I know I have children, I know I have chores in the morning and all this other stuff, mm-hmm. but when I should be sleeping, I'm writing. And I think every writer has that within them. 
especially when they get going. Like sometimes when you are in the zone, nothing can break your concentration. Mm-hmm. I mean, they can mm-hmm. they can yell bloody murder or something. <laughs> nothing can break your concentration <laughs> at all. So I totally resonate with that. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. When we come back, we'll be talking more to Christy Decker and her book, Absolved. If you want to call in and weigh in on the conversation, you certainly can. Call in at 646-668-8485 and then press 1 to be live on air. Or hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Cole, hashtag right stuff with your questions and comments. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. We will be right back. Don't go anywhere. More with Parker and her guests on the Right Stuff Radio Show. We'll be right back. Hi. Is your book club in need of some fresh and exciting questions to ask club members and authors at your next book club meeting? Literacations, the book conversation game, is 70 thought-provoking questions to really get into an in-depth discussion about the books you and your club members are reading. These questions really get into the characters, the storyline, and into the author's head. These questions may just give you and your book club members a whole new way to get into a new conversation, a literacation. Literacations is also a great set of tools for bloggers, interviewers, and authors to use a discussion question. Are you ready to get lit? Please visit our website at litversations.com, L-I-T-E-R, S-A-T-I-O-N dot com. And please like our Facebook page at Simply Said Reading Accessories. Thank you. Have you read the latest issue of SORMAG Digital, the award-winning literary magazine for multicultural readers and writers? SORMAG Digital is available quarterly and showcases interviews with the best authors in multicultural literature. SORMAG Digital features craft and business articles for those interested in writing. If you're looking for a good book, check out our book reviews on what's hot in multicultural literature. For writers looking for new readers to get in front of, SORMAG Digital is the perfect place to introduce your book. We offer advertising spaces that fit your promotional budget. Get your free subscription on SORMAG.com or order a print issue on MagCloud.com. If you would like more information about SORMAG Digital, check us out on SORMAG.com or contact us at SORMAG at Yahoo.com. SORMAG Digital is the magazine for multicultural readers and writers. We're back and you're hanging out with the queen of Tuesday night, Parker J and her guests right here on The Right Stuff. Hi and welcome back to the show. You're listening to The Right Stuff here on WTJC 104.5 and I'm your host, the queen of Tuesday nights. We are talking to Christy Decker. She is the author of the book, Absolved. It's available from Alexio Publishing, my publisher as well. Thank you, Alexio. And uh, wherever books are sold, you can go ahead and get a copy of this book today. You know, Christy, I've been just enjoying our conversation so far. I like the fact that you have such a really interesting beginning to writing. And it's interesting because you always wanted to be a writer. Since you learned how to write, you wanted to be a writer, you know. But now Mm -hmm. I want to know what your journey to publishing looks like. So go ahead and tell us what that journey looked like for you. Sure. With Absolved, after I finished writing, I, I thought I might try to go the agent route and queried a few agents. And I had some positive feedback. Uh, the one male agent actually told me he thought the issue of abortion would be better represented by a female agent. He didn't want to take that on. Um, hmm. I, I disagreed with that. I think a male could, absolutely. Uh, however, I came across uh, info about Alexio Publishing, as you know, because they're mm-hmm. your publisher as well. Uh, they're right. a faith-based publisher, and they were not afraid to take the, the book on, and they decided they wanted it, and we went from there. And I've actually really loved working with them. So I feel like I'm blessed to have, to have found them. I got to tell you with Alexio Publishing, I remember when my agent had contacted me, she said, oh my gosh, this, <laughs> this publisher wants to publish you. And I have been rejected so many times, Christy, that I did not believe her. I was mm-hmm. like, no, that's not way possible. No way possible. You know? <laughs> She's like, yes, it's true. It's true. You know, thank God for my agent because she truly uh, believed in, in it when all those rejections kind of hit you over and over. And I bet you, you probably mm-hmm. felt the same way when this agent says, oh, I think a female of uh, uh, agent should do it better than me. You're like, come on, really? You know? Mm-hmm. So, yes. I mean, they yes. deal with this issue like anyone else does, you know? It's like, oh my gosh, 
gosh, yeah. are women going to get it better? You know? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. <laughs> so I'm glad that, you know, the Lord still used you and use his way to get that done. You know, how did it feel when you got that acceptance letter or that letter to say, Hey, we want to offer to publish a book. How did that feel for you? Cause I want to really oh. encourage the authors out there. Tell us about it. <laughs> I was so overwhelmed, Parker. I started crying um, and I was crying so much. My husband thought maybe something was wrong. <laughs> like that I just gotten <laughs> horrible news <laughs> um, oh and God, I couldn't wrong. even speak to the tears. I was like, no, it's going to be published. It was, it was really wonderful. So yes, yeah, so I'll, I'll never forget that. And I don't think he, he will either because he thought something was seriously wrong, but, but yes, it was, it was I love exciting it. to say the least. I love it. I, I especially like how you said, I can't stop crying. This is, these are good tears. I really can't tell. You know, you kind of wish the good tears had different colors. So if they're like, you know, purple or something, these are good tears, you know? Yes. <laughs> and if they're like be. black, oh no, they're, they're black tears or whatever, <laughs> you know? So I totally uh, feel you with that. I totally feel you on that. And so I want to go into Absolve because Absolve really captures a lot of what we as people have experienced. The if mm -hmm. only, if only. Mm -hmm. And that's why um, I think it's one of the saddest words in Eng any, any language, if only. I think they really are because there's so much regret, guilt, dashed dreams, pain behind those words. So I really want to get into absolved. So go ahead and tell us what absolved is all about. Sure. Um, absolved is about a woman named Stacy who harbors a lot of anger and resentment towards her father who left whenever she was a young girl. Um, she was obviously heartbroken by that and, and just holds on to that, uh, those hurtful feelings through her adulthood. And she's also holding on to the guilt of an abortion she chose to have as a teenager. Um, mm -hmm. So she just has a lot weighing her down, uh, things that she needs to let go of in order to have a full life. It just kind of follows her journey through those, those issues. Let me tell you, abandonment, I think, is one of the worst knives to the back and to your heart you can possibly get when you are abandoned. Mm -hmm. I really think, especially mm -hmm. when you don't even know why. It's like, what was wrong with mm -hmm. me that you left me? Mm -hmm. I know so there are people out there asking that yeah. question now, dealing with that. What was so wrong with me? And you know good and well that it's not you. It's the other person. That person yeah. doesn't have to... But at the same time, we take all that in. So that's why I'm really glad that you tackled this subject. You know, my father abandoned me, and then I had an abortion, which is, oh, my gosh, one of the hugest topics ever. Mm -hmm. You know, one of the hot mm -hmm. issue topics mm -hmm. ever, ever with, our, especially in our modern society. And there's all this stuff laying on us like a heavy, heavy weight, a blanket, you know. And when it comes to mm -hmm. abandonment, just in your own words, when it comes to abandonment, um, how does that affect, in your, in your own opinion, how does that affect people many years later? I mean, how does that affect them? Because they never really quite get over it. How does that affect them? I think in her case, it, it was just the feeling of being unwanted, the, you hmm. know, abandoned because she was unwanted. And, and that wasn't the case, but it, was, it left her with a feeling of that, of maybe feeling unworthy of love mm -hmm. in a sense. Uh, again, just one of those things that, that no one should have to hold on to. Yeah, and we do. And the thing is, when we're abandoned, we hold on to that. We somehow eternalize what this other person did to me, and we make it my fault, you know? And that's why, mm -hmm. you know, tackling the subject like you did, and I, like I said, when I read the book, I, I thoroughly enjoyed it, and just feeling her pain. Because one thing, I gotta let listeners know, one thing that Stacy knows, I mean, not Stacy. I keep calling you Stacey, one thing that Christy knows is she knows how to write relatable characters, and her writing has such a, um, a prose to it that you actually are in the book. You Sometimes you forget that you're reading and that you're in the book. That visualization is there, the way she describes things, even the character's thoughts, Stacy's thoughts. You're there. You almost think you meet Stacy on the street. Like, you met her, you go, hey, Stacy, what's going on? That's exactly <laughs> how... Christy writes. I want to commend you for that. That was one of the things I know. One of the things I noticed, Parker. especially when I read. And I'm not just saying that. I read your book when it first came out, and I enjoyed it. And I told you that, you know. And thank you. So I want to again let our listeners know to get a copy of the book today. It's on Amazon.com. It's available from AlexiaPublishing.com as well. We did get a question. We got a question from Andre on Twitter. Andre, thank you for your question. Andre asks, "How do you acquire a valid agent?" Andre, thank you so much for your question. Christy. 
I currently do not have an agent. However, <laughs> tell Andre he can go to querytracker.com. That's a wonderful resource if you're trying to seek an agent. Uh, there's also manuscriptwishlist.com. That's another great resource. Or he can go the route of choosing a smaller, medium-sized publisher, as I did with Alexio. They're a small press, but they're really wonderful to work with. And so often small presses will accept unsolicited manuscripts, so he can take that route if he so chooses. Otherwise, he's going to have to send out queries uh, to agents and, again, get that information online with Query Tracker. Andre, I hope that answers your question. I was just going to add to it because I got an agent the same way. I sent a lot of queries out to agents, and most of them did not respond back to me until I got my agent I have now, Vanessa Grosset, and she's absolutely fabulous. And uh, thank you, Vanessa, for everything that you do. You know, uh, Christy, I'm glad that Andre asked that question because it always helps us with understanding how this writing thing goes. And there's so many different paths to writing now that was not available, you know, 10, 20 years ago that wasn't available, mm-hmm. that's available now. Mm-hmm. So that's a really nice part about it. The other thing I want to ask you when it comes to absolved is this. What does absolved mean? I kind of know, but I don't want to assume that I know. <laughs> so go ahead and tell us what absolved sure. means. Sure. I mean, it, it does mean to be forgiven, but even more than that, to be uh, set free from the guilt, to be set free from the blame. Um, so complete, com- to be completely free of, of all of those things, to be completely forgiven. You know what? And I think that is the hardest part we have is forgiveness, especially when we have to forgive other people. But I actually think, and give me your own thoughts about that, I actually think the hardest person to forgive is yourself. What do you think about that? Sure. Oh, of course. Um, Forgiveness is just hard in general. And Mm -hmm. as Christians, we're told that we are forgiven for our sins. Everything's been paid for by the blood of Jesus. And we're also commanded to forgive others, but it's just not an easy thing to do, Um, especially with with yourself. It's just really, it's a really difficult thing to do. I think it's all by the grace of God um, that we're able to to do that, to, to forgive others. You know, I don't, I don't think I could do it on my own. It's all by the grace of God. My pastor recently preached, I think it was the other Sunday, he recently preached, he said, forgiveness is not human. It is not a human thing. You mm-hmm, cannot really mm-hmm. forgive anyone, especially when you have that righteous anger, you know, you mm-hmm. did this to me and you were wrong and da-da-da, you know, and he said, it's not human. I never, I will never forget that because I said, you're absolutely right, pastor. <laughs> it is mm-hmm. not human. Yep. And especially when we, there's nowhere we can hide. When we have to forgive ourselves, we can't hide anywhere. We can't hide behind yeah. any excuse. We can't hide behind any um blanket that can just make us disappear you know like when you're a little kid you try oh, to yeah. disappear you can't you just got to look at yourself <laughs> and say i'm a screw up i messed this up or something like that you mm-hmm. know and so i'm glad that you put that on there that you said you know by the grace of god so we forgive now the thing you talk mm-hmm. about here too is abortion and that is one of the hot button topics of our time and me mm-hmm. being a very very staunch pro-lifer um but i'm not pro condemnation to anybody um being a very um you know, very pro-life, how was it like dealing with that type of issue? You know, because that's a very, very serious issue. How was it like for you talking about that? You're absolutely right. It is a very serious issue. Uh, I I didn't have a problem writing about it. I, I'm involved in the pro-life community where I live. I've volunteered at a pregnancy center, and I've uh, prayed outside of the sidewalk of an abortion clinic in Austin. Mm-hmm. And I'm close friends with other pro-life advocates. Um, so I didn't have a problem talking about it. I think it needs to be talked about. And I think um, in particular, post-abortive women need to be talked about and welcomed. And the pro-life community that I know and that I'm a part of um, doesn't blame the post-abortive woman for her choice. I think what's ironic is that women who go in for abortions don't feel like they have a choice, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. and it's called choice, but they don't feel like they have one. And I think, As a society, we should do better by these women, and as a society, we should also welcome these women after they've made that choice and say, it's okay, forgiveness is available to you, you don't have to hold on to this. And so I I was actually happy to to write about it um, and bring light to the the issue of the post-abortive woman. Now, have you been approached by women who've read your book who've had abortions? I, I have talked to women... Uh, one example, someone close to me read the book and then said, you know, 
my mom actually had an abortion and I should have another sibling. And this was 30 years ago. And Mm -hmm. she still hurts over it. Uh, That due date passes every year and she wonders what would have been. Mm -hmm. Uh, she opened up to me about that and I told her, you know, there's just no reason. Uh, that's, that's one case. A lot of women feel this way that they don't know who to talk to. Um, and I, I'm glad you asked Parker because I really want to tell people who are listening, Mm -hmm. there's resources available to women. Um, there's a ministry out there. It's called project Rachel and you can contact them by going onto their website. It's www.hopeafterabortion.org. Um, and there's a lot of resources. There's counselors available. Um, but but women just don't need to hold on to that guilt. You, yeah. You know, I just don't believe that. I, I think women deserve better. So. And Rachel is a R-A-C-H-E-L. Is that the? Uh, yes, um, Project Rachel. Okay. Yeah, Project Rachel. Oh, yeah, I see it right here. It's on Twitter. Mm-hmm. For those of you who want to follow, just go to at Twitter, Project Rachel. And um, that's the resource that you want to go. And their website is hopeafterabortion.com. We do have a caller calling in. Caller, how are you doing today? I'm real good. How are you, Parker? I'm fine. And Thanks hello so much to your guests in. as well. I had Hi. two uh, questions. One was you were talking about being abandoned. And what do you do when you're abandoned, but the person that you feel has abandoned you is still there? They're still Hmm. there. Hmm. There is such a thing. And then the second thing I wanted to ask was I've often wondered, I've seen people standing outside of these clinics. What is, why do you do that? I can answer the second question for you if you'd like because I've been outside on the sidewalk. My entire purpose there was to pray. So I'm close with people who have been sidewalk counselors, who if women would talk to them, they would tell them, hey, you have options. You don't have to go into the clinic. There's a pregnancy center a block away where you can actually get free resources, um, help not just during your pregnancy, but after if you need material items such as diapers, baby food, clothes, et cetera, uh, just letting women know all of their options. So you're standing out there to deter them? That's the hope, yes, so that they don't make make the mistake of having an abortion, absolutely. Well, there are a lot of other things that go on in those clinics, though. It's not all, you know, all abortion. Those aren't the women they're they're speaking to. The the hope of the sidewalk counselors and the people praying are to deter women from making the choice of of having an abortion. Does that answer your question, Colin? Well, no, because I think that if someone's Mm -hmm. standing out there, if a person has already made up their mind and they're really wrestling with their decision, but they've decided to go, you know, do it anyway, then someone out there trying to, you know, tell them that, no, you shouldn't do it, they already know this. And to me that hurts more when you know you have to do it because society, I'm just saying that I have experienced people who fault women that have children because they say, you know, they get on aid and this, that, and the other, and they don't want their money going to aid. Well, if they don't want their money going to aid, why are they standing outside? It's just, you know, trying to deter people and encouraging them to have this child that they don't even want to pay for that they don't have a choice because the money comes out of your paycheck anyway. And that's my hope is that women will feel like they do have another choice. I completely agree with you. If you're standing out there saying you shouldn't have an abortion, but you're not willing to uh, provide tax dollars to pay for people who need help, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think uh, as a society, we need to do better by our women. And, and, and I'm, I'm not anti help, anti aid. Um, and, and being on the sidewalk, I'm not, when I've been out there, I'm not just praying for the women hoping they they don't get an abortion. I am, of course, but even women that get them, I'm praying for their healing after, and I'm praying for the clinic workers as well. 
um, that they would have a conversion. I, I'm out there for everything. I just think we should do better. I don't. I don't feel like that should be uh, the answer. Terminating the life of our our offspring. I don't feel like that should be the answer. So I want it to be unthinkable, not just illegal. I want it to be unthinkable. Okay. Does that, uh, does that answer your question, Colin? Well, it answered the second one, but mm-hmm. not the first one about the person is still in the home, but mentally they are not in. Oh, you talk about in her book. Oh, you talk in her book with yeah. um. Just, okay, so Christy, did you get the caller's question? She's referring to the, the person and how they feel when they feel like the person is still there. Just in your own opinion, I don't know if you have like your own personal experience that you're coming from, but just like in your own opinion, how does that feel for that person? You feel abandoned by someone who's still there. Is yeah. Yes. I. Mm-hmm. That's yeah. one of those cases of of asking God for help and and forgiving someone who's not even sorry. I think Parker said it best when her pastor said, um, "As humans, we're we're not really capable with, but with with the help of God, we're able to do those those things that are hard." Okay. I think Thank you, Parker. Important. I enjoy your show. Thank you so much for calling in. I appreciate your uh, very thoughtful and insightful comments and questions. You know, uh, it's interesting that our caller made those comments because um, that, like you said, we need more dialogue, you know, and sometimes Mm -hmm. when it comes to this issue, and I'm glad you talked about it, when it comes to this issue, sometimes we're so caught up in don't do it, don't do it, and then the other side is like, I should do what I want. I think that we're not talking about all these various nuances and intricacies and all these other side issues that come from it. You know, and I'm glad you said it. You mm-hmm. said, you know, we need to treat women better. You know, and like you said, yes. like when you're there, they think they don't have any other choice, but they may not have yes. been presented with any other choice. You know, they could say like, I remember one of the girls at our, um, at our church, she got pregnant and she actually gave her daughter up for adoption. And um, mm-hmm. that was a choice. And she's able to choose the parents, everything, blah, 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 you know, and at least you have a choice yes. to do something else, you know, and yes. you may not want to be able to take care of them. You may not be able to take care of them. Maybe you never even want a child even, you know, but someone else does, mm-hmm. you know, and mm-hmm. to me, you at least have more options than just to terminate your pregnancy. Like I said, I'm a diehard yes. uh, pro-lifer, um, yes. but like I said, I'm not pro-condemnation. I'm really glad that the caller made those comments because what she's doing is putting more nuances into that. That's, you know, that's what's going to ask you, Christy. When it comes to these type of subjects, they're hard topics. They're, we're, we're not talking mm-hmm. like these are easy things to combat because someone may be listening in our audience who, like you said, is post-abortive, who's had this decision, mm-hmm. feel like, I cannot get rid of this feeling, I can't get rid of this guilt. Or on the flip side, for a few of my friends who had abortions, they're fine. They, they're, they've gone about their lives. They don't feel any type of regret or anything, you know? And mm-hmm. why do you think as Christian authors, we should not – stray away from these type of topics? Somebody needs a voice. Somebody mm-hmm. that may be afraid to, to say it on their own, and, and that's kind of our role and responsibility, I think, uh, is to give them a voice. You know, mm-hmm. and you said you're anti-condemnation, and I think that's perfect. And even the caller saying, you don't want to be on the sidewalk making those women feel feel bad, and that's absolutely correct. That's why I don't agree with people who hold up signs of um, aborted babies, very gory pictures on them and things like that. And, and whenever they call them murderers, that's not loving on those women. That's the opposite. No. And yeah. that's going to turn those women the opposite direction. I think mm-hmm. the only way we're going to reach out to anyone who has a difference of opinion uh, than us is, is with love. 100%. Hey, man. I you know? am just like tingling right now. I feel like, you know, I could just jump through this <laughs> Just, just hug you, Christy. I just really feel that way. So I'm saying because I get what you're saying, you know, and I get that because of the fact that if we're going to be absolved, we cannot have people beating us down while we're down. Exactly. You know, like I'm already yes. down on the ground, yes. I'm going to kick you in the head. You know? Yes. <laughs> you know what Those I mean? women are already in, obviously, in desperate situations. And the goal mm-hmm. of the sidewalk counselors that I know <laughs> Mm, right. I know personally that I've been around is to love on them, not make them feel bad and, and say, hey, we understand what you're going through is very difficult. You know, let's get you some other resources. Let, let me show you some other options, you know, mm-hmm. without calling them names, without saying you're you, condemning them, as you said, being, you know, um, yes. there's a better I, I way. Totally so I think we should be totally doing better. 
Oh, you're absolutely right. And, you know, in your book, you kind of compound where all this is coming from with Stacy because she was abandoned, you know, and then for yeah. her to go through the same thing with this abortion, you know, and still, you know, so it's like compounding, compounding. And the people on the sidewalk that you're ministering to, ministering, <laughs> ministering to uh, maybe having the same kind of issues. You know, and that's mm-hmm. that's why I'm so glad that you wrote this book and that the God that God used you to write this book. So we're talking today to Christy Decker. She is the author of the book Absolved. It is available from Alexio Publishing. You can get it today or you can get it on Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. You can go ahead and get a copy of this book today. You're absolutely going to love it. What I really like about the book is the cover. It shows this beautiful, very artistic butterfly. And when I think of a butterfly, I think of metamorphosis. I think of change. I think of letting go because a butterfly first starts off as a chrysalis and turns into a butterfly. But throughout the whole process, you're changing throughout everything. And then when they go out through the chrysalis, they can't have any help breaking through that chrysalis. They have to break through it themselves. But the way you break through it is you have to keep working at it, keep working at it. And forgiveness, I think, is a it's a process. It can be a um, – it's a one-time event where you make a decision, I'm going to forgive this person, and then there's a process that comes along with it. We'll talk about that on the side of the break. You want to weigh in, call in 646-668-8485, and then press 1 to be live on air. Or hit me on Twitter at Parker J. Cole, hashtag right stuff with your questions and comments. We're going to go ahead and take another quick, short break. We will be right back. God gives humans the gift of making amazing stories to glorify Him. At SpeculativeFaith.com, our ministry is to help fans explore fantasy, science fiction, supernatural stories, and beyond from an intentional and biblical Christian perspective. We share daily articles and have extensive archives tackling hot topics like end times beliefs, the art of writing, creative excellence in the Christian subcultures, discernment, sex, magic, Harry Potter, and space aliens and the Bible. If you are a parent or anyone else with a discriminating palate, our reviewers explore fantastical novels, movies, television, and games in light of God's beauty, goodness, and truth. Want to find Christian stories? The SpecFaith Library lists every fantastical novel we can find from a Christian author. It's all part of our mission to discern, engage, and enjoy fantastical human creativity in honor of our Creator, Jesus Christ. SpeculativeFaith.com, exploring fantastical stories for God's glory. Are you a reader looking for more compelling Christian fiction? Maybe something a little more edgy or a bit more real? Are you tired of most Christian fiction shying away from the truth and settling for a rose-tinted view of the world and its issues? Or are you an author who has a compelling story to tell but you're afraid it doesn't jive with today's brand of Christian or secular fiction? Are you tired of Christian publishers telling you that your content is too edgy? Or maybe you've tried submitting your content under the radar to secular publishers only to be told your themes are a bit too religious. We invite you to take a look at the Crossover Alliance. We are an online publishing company that specializes in edgy Christian speculative fiction. Speculative fiction with Christian themes and real world content. Our company is formed from authors and readers just like you who are breaking into the mainstream and Christian markets with this compelling genre. Head over to the www.thecrossoveralliance.com for all the details on who we are, what we do, and what we accept. Right now, if you sign up for our email newsletter, you'll receive a free digital copy of our first short story anthology. Check us out today and help us spread the word about the Crossover Alliance, where light shines brighter in the darkness. We're back, and you're hanging out with the queen of Tuesday night, Parker J. and her guest, right here on The Right Stuff. Hi, and welcome back to the show. You're listening to The Right Stuff here on WPJC 104.5 talking to my wonderful guest co-host and contributor today, Christy Decker. She is the author of the book Absolved. Let me tell you, go ahead and get a copy of this book today. You are going to love it. You're going to love the message behind it. And you're going to love Christy's writing. She has a very unique way of writing. Like I said, when I was reading the book, I felt as if I was there. Like I am there watching these events unfold. And that takes a special skill. And I think, I believe Christy has that skill. So go ahead and get a copy of Absolve today. And when you do, Love my sister, and make sure you leave a review. I cannot tell you how important it is to have reviews for our authors because we want to make sure that we did what we set out to do. And if we don't have that information from you, how do we know? So thank you so much for your support. I already, I already know you're going to support Chris, so thank you so much for that. 
you know, Christy, I was talking about the book and how the cover of the book has this lovely, lovely purple, very artistic butterfly. And I kind of gave my thoughts on it. But what was your thought when you saw the cover of the book that Alexio sent to you? What was your thought when you saw that cover? Did you kind of have the same idea? Was it different? Go ahead and tell us. I, I liked it as well. I kind of originally was thinking maybe of like a bird being released from a mm-hmm. cage. And then and then uh, they came to me with the idea of the butterfly and, and said, as you said, it's it's a complete transformation, which mm-hmm. is what happens to the character in, in the book. And so I, I totally agreed with them. Uh, as you said, the butterfly comes out completely changed, completely new, uh, rid of the old. And I think that is a perfect representation of the main character of the book. So, so I liked it a lot. You know, and to be honest with you, I find caterpillars rather ugly, you know, <laughs> they're <laughs> both, you know, they're this nasty looking mini footed <laughs> creepy thing with things sticking out of their bodies. And I remember I saw a, like just the white little butterflies here in Michigan. We had That's these so white funny. little butterflies. And it looked horrible. It was absolutely horrible. I was like, ugh, <laughs> gosh, not, you know. And so uh, I'm not a bug person. I should let you know that. I don't like bugs <laughs> by any means. I've run from butterflies. So just letting you know, I'm a very big oh, wuss when it comes to butterflies. So, I don't know I that like I'm anti-bug, but. <laughs> I'm totally anti-bug. I feel like this is my 1,200-square-foot house. If you enter this house, you will die. I'm just going to let you know right now. <laughs> I wish there was a, like a universal translator for insects <laughs> so I could let them know. Don't come here. You're going to die. So sorry, I got You're off like track one. for a second. Oh, no worries. <laughs> I got off track. That's funny. But, but I wanted to um, let people know about your other works that you have. So go ahead and tell about your other books you have out there. Oh, sure. I have another book that was published last year, also by um, Alexio Publishing, who is wonderful. Um, mm-hmm. it's, it's different than this one for sure. It's called The Consequence, and it's about a relationship that is changed by infidelity. Um, it, it leans a little bit towards chiclet, I would say, though I did mm-hmm. have a male author read it recently and tell me he enjoyed it, even though he had bought it for his wife originally. Uh, okay. So, of course, men men read it too. Um, but, yes, it's just basically our, our actions have consequences, and there's a big one in this book. So that was oh, the, yeah. the most recent release that I had was The Consequence. It's called The Consequence. So her books available are absolved of The Consequence. And our actions do have consequences, you know, and I think we need to be more open about that. And so when you don't make the wrong, when you make that decision or you decide to make that decision, remember there's a, what, what, do, you, what do you say, uh, for every action is a reaction. You know, for one thing that you do, yeah. you get a reaction from that one. And uh, I'm, yeah. I'm glad that you took on the topic of infidelity, which is a huge thing, mm-hmm. too. You're just tackling Another. these topics, Christy. You know, do it. I don't I'm know why. For it. <laughs> the Lord's calling you yeah. to do it. The Lord is calling you to do it. I want to let our listeners know about where we can find you online. So go ahead and give okay. us your um, social media outlets and your website. Sure. I am on Twitter um, at Christy Decker 83. And I also have a Facebook page, um, Facebook slash Christy Decker 83. And then my blog can be found at www.myonedayisnow.blogspot.com. You know, um, this show is always about encouraging authors. But before I do that, I, I do want to go back and ask you one question. You know, I asked you about how people who have had abortion, how they've responded to this book and everything. But how mm-hmm. have your readers just in general have responded to your book? I forgot to ask you that. It's been overwhelmingly positive. And I've had people write me uh, private messages telling me that they just appreciated the message of forgiveness because they they needed to read about that. And there was even one in particular who told me she had an issue similar to my character's issue with her father, and mm. she needed to remedy her relationship with her father, and she felt pushed and motivated to do so after reading the book. So that was hey, huge for me. Yeah. That alone was it. That alone was it. I was like, okay, I, I'm good. I could get no other feedback, and I was completely content just with her message. So. And that's when I think you realize your writing is more than just writing. That's when you realize, to me, I feel I feel my writing is a ministry. And uh, that's yes. when you start to realize that your writing actually is doing more than just entertaining you with a story, you're reaching people and hitting them at that level. Like I already told our listeners, I knew that was going to happen. So our listeners, listen, get a copy of Absolve <laughs> today. It's on alexiopublishing.com or you can get it on Amazon. 
Go ahead, get a copy of this book today. You're going to love the book by Chrissy Decker. Beautiful cover of a beautiful butterfly that is released and absolved from everything that she's gone through. Go ahead and get a copy of that today. You know, I want to go ahead in the few moments that we have, I want you to give some encouraging words to authors out there. This show is all about encouraging authors to pick up the pen and use the gift that God gave them to write. So go ahead in your own words, tell us and encourage us today. Sure. You know, whenever I was writing Absolved, I was unsure if I was ever going to really finish and really pursue publication. My husband knew that I was writing it, but I hadn't shared it with a whole lot of other people. Um, He was working with a female detective who's also a published author, and he saw that she had a book, and he said, hey, my wife is writing a book. Do you have anything that I should tell her? Do you have any advice? And she said, yes, tell her to finish the book. And I, I know that sounds so simple, and, and so, of course, you know, of course, finish the book. But I needed to hear that. I needed to be told, finish the project you're working on, and then you can move forward. But that's it. Finish what you're working on and continue moving forward and taking steps. And just don't quit, ever. Just just keep doing it. I like that. You said finish the book. That is three words that would change someone's life. Finish mm-hmm the book no matter how it sounds right now once you write the end as our lord said it is finished you know what i mean just (laughs) finish the book Mm -hmm. because you know what Mm -hmm. one author on a show one time she said you never know what is waiting for you on the other side of obedience when you are obedient to god's word and obedient to the calling that he's placed in you you will never know how that will reap benefits for what you do when you finish and do what he's giving you to do i i love that christy I absolutely love that. Well, it didn't that. come from me. It came, it came from a detective, but it's great. It's oh, yeah. great about it. <laughs> oh, you said, oh, she's a detective. Oh, wonderful, wonderful. And, uh, yeah, this is she was a detective. Yeah. Wow. Oh, that would be nice to have her on the show one day. Like, oh, my gosh, come here. I come know. Here. You should let her know. Just let she her know. probably has lots of stories. Oh, you know, tell her I would love to have her on. And I know just my <laughs> writer friends will love to have her. Let her know that I would love to have her on my show. Don't forget, and I'll remind you um, okay. offline to let her know. I think that's a fascinating topic, <laughs> you know. Again, yeah. thank you, thank you. Thank you so much, Christy, for being with me on the show today. I cannot thank you enough for, you for your – um, Oh, yeah, it's been just fun. And, again, <laughs> thank you for being with it me was. today. Thank you. We were talking today to Christy Decker. She is the author of the book Absolved, which is available from ElexioPublishing.com. It's also on Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. You can go ahead and get a copy of this book today. And when you get a copy of this book, let me tell you, you're going to love her story. You're going to love the agony that Stacey goes through because that agony more than likely is reflected in you. You felt like Stacy had before. You felt abandoned. You felt guilty for the things that you've done in the past. You've said those two words, if only. You've had those thoughts of, you know what? I messed up. I can never get past this. And you're still in that chrysalis stage, that caterpillar slash chrysalis stage where you wallow in that guilt and wallow in that unforgiveness and wallow in that self-pity. But let me tell you, when you read Christy Decker's book, Absolved, you're going to realize that you have to stay there. You don't have to live there. You can continue to grow from the pain of your past, whatever it is, and you can be absolved of that forgiveness, and you can become a beautiful, emerging butterfly. And I want to encourage you today that if God has given you the gift to write, to go ahead, pick up the pen, and write One thing she said, Christy said on the show today, that she got from a female detective that her husband knew, who's also an author, said, finish the book. Simmer on that for a second. Finish the book. Finish it. Don't continue to procrastinate and procrastinate and procrastinate and keep wishing. You don't want your words to be if only two. You want your words to be the end. Those are some of the bigger, better words you want to hear. The end. No more having to wish it's almost done. No more wondering if it's going to be done. No more wondering, does this sound great? No, the end. You want those words in your, on your lips. You want those words in your heart. Not, if only I had finished this book. If only I hadn't been so lazy. If only, if only, if only. You don't want to say those words. You want to say the end. We want to thank Christy so much for being with us on the show today to talk about her book, Absolved. Again, it's available on Alexio Publishing. 
site, you go to AlexiaPublishing.com, you can go to Amazon.com or wherever books are sold. So go ahead and get a copy of Resolve. Make sure you leave a review for Christy to let her know that what she set out to do that she did. And thank you so much for all those who have been supportive of Christy. Make sure you continue to support her with her other books, The Consequence, also available from AlexiaPublishing.com. We're going to go ahead and take a quick short break. When we come back, we're going to do our prayer list. Remember I told you we're going to have a prayer list today, a monthly prayer list. So we're going to do that in just a few moments. We're going to go ahead and take a really quick short break. We will be right back. Question, if you write a book, everybody will rush out to buy it. Obvious answer, no. If you were a celebrity or if you had a huge marketing budget, then maybe you can get a lot of exposure for your book. Another solution would be to check out joeytweets.com. joeytweets.com is a promotion and marketing service with access to over one-third of a million followers on Twitter. joeytweets.com has three packages available to fit any budget. That's J-O-E-Y-T-W-E-E-T-S.com. JoeyTweets.com. Get some serious exposure for your books. And we're back and we're getting ready to have our author prayer list today. I sent out this to our social media uh, last week and we did get a couple of responses. So with me to pray for you is my uh, pastor, Pastor George. George, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? You know, George, I'm doing well, and I want to thank you so much for taking up the banner to pray for our authors. You know, this is on my heart for some time, is to make sure that we don't just showcase them, that we are very much involved in what's going on in the authors who have been on the show, who follow the show, who support the show, that we care about what's going on with them. And we want to be in prayer with them for their careers. You know, what does the word say about prayer that we as authors especially should remember? Well, there's so much that it says about prayer, but the biggest thing is that we're to share our burdens with one another, that we Hmm. can draw from each other and go to each other, go for each other to the throne, and in doing so, you know, I think the biggest scripture for us to remember tonight as we pray together is that where any two or three ask for anything in his name, it will be done. Amen. Amen. With that, as we pray, I would appreciate if those who are listening would agree with us in the prayers that we're praying. You know, before I have you start praying, I just want to just um, publicly say what what we're specifically praying for, and then I know you're going to um, lead, go as the Lord leads you. One of our authors who wishes to remain anonymous wants us to focus the prayers on new opportunities and growth and courage as they step out to take on new responsibilities. So we definitely want to pray for that author today, and they are on our prayer list. We also want to thank Sam from Christian, uh, Christian the Authors Network. Sam said to pray for our book sales and that our books get in the hands of readers that need them the most. Sam from uh, Christian Indie Authors Network, thank you so much for that prayer request. So go ahead, George, and I'm going to let you lead as the Lord guides you. So, Father God, we come to you tonight, first off, thanking you that we can approach your throne in boldness because of the grace and forgiving power of your son, Jesus. Lord, I thank you for Parker and for this show and for the fact that she is willing to do whatever it is that you place in her heart to do, even things that may not seem like the thing that a show for authors would do, like praying for each other. Father God, I I thank you for her willing servant's heart to reach out to the authors who are trying to make a difference for you. God, we ask a blessing on her. We ask a blessing on her network, we ask a blessing on her right, that you would lift her up and put her in a place where she can have more influence on those that you have placed in her care, the authors, the readers, the listeners. God, we pray for this author who's asking for you to provide new opportunities for growth in her current opportunities, both in her writing and in and in her networking ministry. Lord, I just pray that you work in every situation to bring her to a new level, to new opportunities, to new stories to tell. Lord, I pray 
that you would bless her both financially and with influence on those around her, Lord. I pray also just for her husband, God, that you would just make him the man of God that he is already striving to be and more so. God, in every area that they need your hand to touch upon them, do a work, Lord. Let them be encouraged. Let them be lifted up by those around them. Let anything that has come against them fall by the wayside. Let your will be done in their lives. God, I thank you for Samantha, my friend, my partner in the Christian Indie Authors Network. Lord, I thank you for her servant's heart and for the fact that she always wants us to pray for those Christian indie authors, both in her network and out of her network, that they will have new stories, that their stories will sell and provide for their family's financial needs, that those stories will touch the people that you have had them write those stories for. God, I agree with her heartfelt cry and prayer that the stories that all of us listening write reach the people that you have for them to reach, that touch hearts and lives and draw people closer to you. God, I pray for those that weren't sure yet if they should send in a prayer request to this show, that they weren't sure what this segment was going to be like. God, I pray that you would just increase the desire to see you work in each of our authors' lives in each of our readers' lives, in each of the listeners' lives, and in mine and Parker's life as well. God, just give us a deeper desire to see and partner with you at work in the world around us. We ask all these things tonight in the mighty name of Jesus and through the power that his name gives us. Amen. And amen. Oh, pastor, 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 thank you. Thank you so much for that powerful prayer. I know when I was, the Lord led me to do this, I wasn't sure what exactly to do, but I knew if I just call on you, you will help me. And thank you so much for praying for our office today. We hope that the prayer that Pastor George prayed, I hope it reaches you wherever you are. If you're dealing with something, if you have an issues. I hope it reaches you wherever you are. And let me know if you want us to pray for you on the show. Like I said, we're going to be doing this monthly for now, and we're going to let the Lord lead as he sees fit. So thank you, George, for being with me, and thank you so much for that powerful prayer you gave us. Thank you so much. You are so welcome. Thank you all for joining me for this edition of the show. I hope that you really enjoyed the prayer that we have for our authors. We're going to be doing this monthly for now. And I just want to thank you so much for joining me today. You, you know what? I want you to have a wonderful, glorious evening from the Queen of Tuesday Nights, Parker J. See you later on. Bye. Thank you for joining us for this edition of The Right Stuff. Follow Parker online at parkerjcole.com. To hear this show and other shows, visit the show archive at therightstuffradio.wordpress.com. We'll be back same time next week, 7 p.m. Eastern Time.